Okay, so this is the second video in which I want to deal with 10 problems that I came across doing the discomatic. Now, these aren't exclusive. These are just 10 that I came across. You may be different. There are no doubt other problems than the ones I came across, but uh, those are for another video or for me to discover at a later date. Please note, though, that although the machine is open, the lid is up, I am using this with the power off. I will close the lid and move various components to the positions I need to show you what's happening as we go through the video but I will not be working inside that machine with any power supplied to it whatsoever. On to problem number one. Now <clears throat> problem number one is is it's be the first major problem you come across when you get your discomatic and that is you might well risk turning it on and finding nothing works or there's some movement and not a lot's happening. Generally, the main problem with um, most discomatics when they've been stood is that they simply don't work because they have become dry and everything, all the pivots are dry and things just resist any movement whatsoever. And this is where you need to resist a bit of movement because the movement you need to resist is to head for the WD-40 and liberally spray it all over. This is not going to, it might give you a short term uh, result, it may well work and loosen various parts but generally all you're doing is storing up trouble for later because the WD-40 will lie there on surfaces and will attract dust that will inevitably cause later problems. So don't run for the WD-40. If you must do any lubrication, be careful where you lubricate them, the pivots and things, but use sewing machine oil. Don't use three-in-one oil, that becomes sticky with age. So light sewing machine oil little drop here and there on pivots you think may need it but not three in one and certainly not WD-40. Problem number two now I was quite lucky with mine um, and, and uh, in fact mine came with reasonable belts you'll see there are three of them there there's one driving the flywheel and there are two at the back running from the motor that drive the mechanism. I was quite lucky in that they were all intact However, one problem with, with, with belts that have been on these machines for a long, long time is that they disintegrate, and they disintegrate into the nastiest, blackest, stickiest stuff you can imagine. And uh, there had been some evidence that the original belts on this machine had actually disintegrated in that mess. They were on, it was on the, the micro switch, and it was on various parties, parts of the arm. But as I say, um, the, 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 the main belts there, which would be the source of that uh, mess in the first place, had been replaced and the, 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 the various pulleys there had been cleaned up. If you are unfortunate enough not to get one in that position, all of that gunge must be cleaned off. Um, without it, the, you can, if there are traces of it in those grooves, the, the, uh, the speed of the record can be increased. Also, you will get wow and flutter and various things. So do make sure all that is cleaned away. New belts can be obtained from Stuart McGregor at www.askstuart.co.uk and he will sell you a set of belts and they will come with the instructions of how to fit them. Now problems three and four I'm combining simply because problem four becomes a problem of your own creation as you're solving problem three. Now problem three is that at the bottom of the selector rods here, that there is a foam washer that cushions the action of the selector rod as it is ejected from by the mech to come back to its home position. Now, inevitably, those will be perished and will need replacing. And uh, in this occasion, I've, I've replaced them by cutting some washers out of neoprene rubber. And um, that's not proving too successful because the, 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 foam, of, uh, the foam rubber is actually getting caught on the, the front panel where the selector rod passes through it and is, is breaking down a bit. So I'm gradually replacing those foam washers with uh, a couple of, of rubber O-rings there. Eventually I'll do the whole lot. But in doing, um, in replacing those washers, which the originals will have perished by now, they'll be long gone. Um, in replacing those you will need to take all the selector rods out and in taking the selector rods out it's inevitable you create a further problem and that problem is that when these bars are repositioned you must make sure that there is free movement 
of that bar. What should happen is you move the selection, the, the rod stays in position held as that shoulder rests on that little spring that's coming from underneath that central horizontal bar. When the mech pack makes that selection, it will trigger that and that spring will force or should force the selector rod back into position. It, in order to do that, it needs free movement. So when you've put, done the washers, check for free movement of each bar on reassembly of the selector rod. This next problem is a very common one and it is noticeable when your records are loaded in the rack and the rack is in the discomatic. You've made a selection, the mech moves along and you see a rustling at the top of the records and it's being caused by this part of the pickup mechanism for each record brushing against the underside of the records. The fix is to take off that, take out that pin there that's held by a couple of circlips. That allows you to lift that casting and underside you will see a little yoke into which a spigot from that assembly fits. It's a case of putting a piece of heat shrink to actually increase the width of that front part of the yoke which has the effect of lowering this arm so that it no longer brushes with the bottom of the record. Now problem number six is, is an annoying little problem, um, but just be aware of it. You can see here the, the record indicator um, protrudes through the body of the, through the front panel of the, uh, the discomatic coming there. And you can see its back end, you can just see it there on either side, the, 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 the pickup arm there, and it, it locates underneath the mech assembly. Um, it's fixed by one screw that comes in from this side and just be aware that when you're putting that back if you've needed to remove it for any reason make sure it's lifted as high up as possible because the problem it creates is simply the bottom of that that indicator drags on the bottom of the case or on the the aluminium plate where the numbers are and it is most annoying so do make sure that's lifted up before it's fixed by that screw problem number seven now problem number seven uh, is concerned with noise from the amplifier. Now, uh, I'll be talking about that in, in, in problem number eight, but in problem number seven, the noise I'm talking about is a, a shushing noise that may come from the amplifier. And the shushing noise is very similar to the noise you get from an old radio when you're trying to adjust the volume of the tone controls. There's dirt on the wipers and you get this awful shh as it goes through those points, as the wipers move through those points usually cleaned by working the potentiometer a little bit or spraying it with switch cleaner. I got a similar problem with the discomatic when the mech was moving up and down the rails. There was this shushing. What it is, it's a bad earth on the mech. Um, and the way I've solved it is I've put a tag here that runs to the, the mechanism chassis. It's actually, I've fixed it to a couple of uh, to, to a, a bracket I should say, there's one on the other side, there's two of these that hold the mech on the rail and I've run a connection from there and then I've run it back along the, the track for the indicator light and over the folding arm and eventually it terminated it in an earth tag on the chassis of the, uh, the discomatic, the, the actual track chassis so that that's all now earthed and indeed the um, that the problem with the, the, the noise from the amplifier has gone away. So on to problem number eight, which concerns the amplifier um, of the discomatic. Now the amplifier sits in a little case up at the back right hand side of the, of the machine. And uh, after 50 years, chances are it's, it's proving to be a problem. Um, there is, in my, in my instance, there was a, quite a lot of, of noise coming from that amplifier. It played okay, but there was a lot of background noise, a lot of white noise, if you like. There was a, this loud um, shushing sound, not the, the, the problem of seven, uh, but th this was another problem. It seemed to be a lot of noise there all the time. It was very noisy. Uh, I know nothing about electronics, so I shipped mine off to Stuart McGregor at stuart.co.uk and he rebuilt it. Generally, what it entails, I gather, is replacing the electrolytic capacitors, possibly resistors, possibly transistors, 
in fact in mine all the electrolytic capacitors were removed um, some resistors and one of the transistors uh, wiring it back was a bit tricky in that the indicator light takes a feed from that amplifier and the wiring for that was a little bit short so um, what I did was uh, I, I kind of extended that wiring and that block that you can see there that terminal block is where I've made the connection for the indicator light outside the amplifier should I ever need to remove that amplifier which I hope I never will then rather than having to desolder the the, 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 the the contacts of that indicator wiring in the actual amp I can just separate the wires of that terminal block but the amplifier almost inevitably will be a problem because of leaking capacitors at the very least so on to problem nine <clears throat> and actually like seven and eight nine and ten are going to be connected problem nine is concerned with the lo locking mechanism on the uh, on the discomatic and with mine as with so many uh, there were problems and and the reason there are problems are probably down to the misuse of that locking mechanism by by previous owners with mine this area up here was was broken and had to be repaired parts of the actual mechanism in here were, were lying around in the in the machine i mean basically what should happen is that the the mech comes along hits that plate there pushes it in now that allows then movement of this plate to to go forwards on, under the pressure from the lid release button and that movement forwards of that plate locks the mechanism into position and only when it's in that position can you actually then close down the lid and what happens is people try and close down the lid without doing that and consequently something breaks somewhere so basically there we see the locking mechanism as it should appear finally to problem number 10 now problem number 10 is very common and it's part of the closing down mechanism of, of the, the unit. Basically what will happen is the mech will come back to this left hand side. Now when it reaches that left hand side it should switch off. A common problem with the discomatic is it doesn't. Now in order for it to switch off what happens is the micro switch there at the back is activated by the mech as it approaches and switches the current off. However the mech is still under a certain amount of inertia and this rail here will move forwards and in moving forwards will actually should contact this overrun uh, stop unit here which is firmly fixed onto the, the rod. Now that has got to be in the correct position because if it isn't what will happen is whilst the mech may switch the power off there at the micro switch the inertia and the movement of the mech and the arm will bring the mech into a position where it then starts again so it does this continual closing and and uh, and, and and starting so that's important the micro switch assembly and in particular that overrun assembly there must be correctly set and positioned well there we go 10 problems related to the kb discomatic now i hope you found that useful um Time hasn't permitted me to go into any of them in great detail and if you do have specific problems uh, please do get in touch or in fact you can have a, a word with Stuart McGregor who's far more knowledgeable about these than I am at www.askstuart.co.uk but in the meantime I hope there's something in there that you found useful and maybe you'll come back again sometime. See you then, take care now, bye bye.